Welcome back to Spartan Up the Podcast. We are your accountability partners, and Joe, with his passport, which must have a thousand pages, travels all over the world to find the best minds we can to bring you them each week. And you want to know what? If you subscribe on YouTube, then you can come with us for free. That's it's right. a pretty good deal. So um, who are we? We're your accountability partners. I'm Sephra Alexandra. This is Joe DeSena, founder, father of Spartan Race, and also a father. Also a dad. And this, dad. Was, this was an awesome interview, actually. We interviewed another dad. He wrote a book called Daddy Saturdays. He was kind enough on his own dime to come out to Lake Tahoe, where we had our world championships and a, and a media fest sponsored by ATP Science. And he shows up, and we start interviewing him. We don't know what to expect. I kind of had a hint because I know him for the past few years, but I didn't realize he had honed in on this societal issue that if you want to change things, it starts with changing parenting. Got to be a better parent. doesn't matter. Dad, even though the book is called Daddy Saturday, it's better dad, better mom, better uncle, better aunt, whatever it is. takes a village. We, we, we've got to put more into our kids. And he, he poked some holes in uh, what I thought was a perfect parenting style I had. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so if you want to improve, we'll come back afterwards and we'll, we'll have a chat about it. So see you in a bit. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan X Leadership. Find out more at SpartanXLeadership.com. We are here in Lake Tahoe at the Spartan World Championships and at the Spartan World Media Fest brought to you by ATP Science. This has been an incredible opportunity to meet all kinds of amazing people. Probably none more fun than you. Uh, I've had a lot of fun talking to you off camera a little bit here. Yeah, sure. So this is Justin Batt, uh, Daddy Saturday. Uh, We're going to find out all about Daddy Saturday, all about you. So I'm just going to throw it to you. I want to hear... What is Daddy Saturday and how did it come about? Sure. Daddy Saturday is a movement to help (laughs) engage fathers. Our goal is to reach 10 million fathers in the next 10 years and to end the fatherlessness epidemic. And I didn't realize this until a couple of years ago, but there are 24 million kids in America today that don't have a father living in the home. But even more importantly, there's millions more kids who have a father that's physically present but emotionally absent. And Daddy Saturday is a, a field manual, if you will. It's a platform. It's a movement to help those dads be intentional and engage with their kids to raise good kids that become great adults and to change the next generation. That's awesome. Um, two things jumped on me right away. Uh, I know why you and Joe get along so well. He wants to rip 10 million people off the couch. Yeah. And you're saying we're going to get 10 million dads out there engaged and in doing incredible things. Sure. That's fantastic. Well, so. he has 100 million now. So oh, it is 100 million. He, yeah, he keeps yeah, yeah. up in his number. Though. That's true. So every right? time I That's talk true. to him, I'm like, Joe, I have to, you're, I'm 10 million. I can now I got to go to 100 million. Hey, but you want friends who push you, right? That's right. That's it's great. All good. But I really, really love how you identified that, that it's not just about the, the kids who don't have dads. It's the kids who don't have dads who are there, like the, the, who are there but aren't there. That's right. And, and I, you know, I've been guilty of that over, over the years. I, I think of myself as a great dad, but there were times when uh, I think back and think, man, I wish I'd been more present, right? Sure. And, and you've decided to do something about it, which is great, and not just for you but for other people. So what was the tipping point? Tell, tell me about where, where this came from. Yeah, so over a decade ago, my wife, Heather, started mm-hmm. a bridal boutique of mm-hmm. her own business, and so it caused her to work on Saturdays. Yeah. We had our daughter, our first child, at the same time she opened the store, so I found myself alone with our two-week-old on Saturdays by myself while she worked. Yeah. And I had three boys to the mix, four kids. And I was that corporate America father coming home after a long week of work, stressed mm-hmm. out, tired, overwhelmed, overcome. And I didn't have the I want, relationship. I want Saturday off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. like most dads, right? Yeah, That's yeah. like my day. But yeah. I recognize that I want to support my wife yeah. and also be the dad that I was designed to be for my kids. Yeah. And so I started to be intentional and plan our days together. Yeah. And we tried to make them as epic as possible. You remember Tim the Toolman Taylor, yeah, right? Sure, yeah. 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 We tried to, to take it up a notch and make yeah. it epic. And what I uncovered was this dramatic shift in my relationship with my kids mm-hmm. and our communication and the growth and even the way that Heather looked at me as the father to her children. Yeah. Um, and it just blossomed from there. And I started to recognize that I had a recipe or a secret that helped my family and that could also help other fathers in the in the same time. That's fantastic. And the idea that, you know, you think you're doing it for your kids. It's like, I want to be there for my kids. And you find out that, wow, this opened up my life too. Sure. Yeah. And look, my kids are young, so it made it a little bit easy to plan stuff. You know, Google and YouTube were like my research and development yeah. office. And I would go and check out YouTube and find out what was the latest uh, trend, the ice bucket challenge, or the yeah. slime challenge, or we've done amazing water balloon fights and everything you could ever imagine with an obstacle course race in our own backyard yeah. um, as a way to engage them and create these intentional Saturdays together. That's one of the things I love about it, Spartan Races. You look around, you see all these families out there together, and you see the kids with the parents learning by osmosis. And, you know, if you're the dad, this is, I know what you know, I'm preaching the choir, but if you're the dad who's sitting on the couch doing nothing but watch football, doing nothing but, uh, you know, tell the kids to go outside and play, that's what they're learning, right? Oh, you're spot on. One of the concepts in Daddy Saturday we talk about is far more is caught than taught. 
right? Say, so say, say that again. That's great. Far more is caught yeah. than taught. Wow. And so you can try and teach your kids, but yeah. they learn far more from watching you and observing you. So yeah. to your point, right? Wow. If you're this dad who's out here doing Spartan races and you're engaged in your physical health and you're trying to be healthy and and you know have a good diet and you're not just watching TV and eating bad food, I mean your sure. kids watch that. They yeah. absorb that. And that's what I love about Spartan kids, right? And what I think is interesting, I've talked to Joe Desenna about this, is I've seen a lot of Spartan kids that participate, and the parents don't participate in Spartan. Sure. But they want their kids to, to have a piece yep. of that. And then what ends up happening is they see their kids and how much they enjoy it, and the parents end up getting involved, too. It too. So it does yeah. work both ways. We, we had a great one of our very earliest guests. I, I can't remember which one it was, but they said that all their friends were saying, man, I'm getting out of shape because I just don't have time to work out. You know, Between the time with the kids and time work, and it's like, well, you're waiting until your kids go to bed to work out? What, what are you talking about? Why aren't you working out in front of your kids? That's a great, great concept. And so often we take what we learn in business and we keep it over in the, in the work environment. We don't bring it into our home. Sure. So think of simple things like mission, vision, values, goal setting, um, and then calendaring. Is yeah. a huge one. Yeah, sure. So we all talk about time as our most valuable asset and how we don't have enough margin and we're burning the candle at both ends. You know, a lot of dual working families and dads are working really hard and I get that. But at the same time, um, if you calendar everything and you build, blend your personal and your work calendars, it makes it far more easier to then identify those times and those spaces when you need to be there for your kids or your family for a ball game or sure. for a dance recital or for a daddy daughter date night or to go work out and you know, get your butt out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Start 15 minutes earlier the next day and do that for a week and go 15 minutes again and 15 minutes again until you're up early enough to go make it happen. So you had this great idea. You know, you start doing your own research, start creating these amazing things for your kids. When did you realize, like you say, hey, this is something I can generate for other people. It's going to be a movement. It's going to be something I can actually contribute. What happened was in the neighborhood, other kids started to come over. And they started to watch our YouTube and hear about it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I had this tribe of kids at my house and some yeah. of their dads saying, hey, we want to get involved too. Yeah. Um, and I'll put a caveat there because what's also interesting is, especially with men, we have egos. Mm -hmm. And so I also experienced a bit of dad envy. Sure. Right? That's I had some other dads yeah, that yeah. were like, hey, you know, well, that, that, that daddy's who's this guy? Like, like, who's this guy? That's his yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's also a positive thing because yeah. the dads that also got it, that are a little bit competitive, they'd say, oh, well, I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm going to do yeah. something you know, even better than what Justin's doing, yeah. which is exactly what I wanted to happen because now they're engaged and the platform's taken off. So that's when it started, right? The other yeah. kids started to come over, and now we had a movement, and I recognized this was not just in my backyard. This could go far beyond that and help dads all over the country and eventually all over the world. Tell me what you're growing up. Like, was, was this something that you learned by example or is it something that you're creating that wasn't there for you? Yeah, so my dad was a, a great dad. Mm -hmm. um, he was literally at every single ball game except for one mm -hmm. growing up. He coached most of my teams. My dad spent tons of time throwing the ball, playing catch, was always there with me in the backyard doing stuff. Um, one thing that I also learned was my dad was very performance-based. Yeah. So I was results-driven, and what I found was that my dad would, if after a game I performed well, I got a lot of affirmation. If I didn't, then I got criticism, or in fact, sometimes he would even withdraw. Sure. And so I recognized that in my young adulthood, and didn't want to do that with my kids, so I want to change that paradigm with them. Um, and I also recognized that, you know, my dad was far different than he had a rough childhood growing yeah. up. And so from where he came from and what he did with me, like, amazing. Already he was light years. Light yeah. years ahead, right? Yeah. So my plan, plan was, how do I take that, that platform, how do I stand on the shoulders of a giant and my father, and yeah. do it even better with my kids, and then help everybody else do the same thing? That's fantastic. That, that's really great. Yeah. Um, so tell me about your kids. You got a, a daughter and, and three boys. I do. I yeah, do. Yeah. So the girl's the oldest, Hayden, Olivia, yeah. and then Blaine, yeah. Mason, and Easton. Yeah. And Eleven, nine, seven, five. Yeah. So it's the odd number year this yeah, year. Yeah, Make yeah, sure yeah. be the even number year. Yeah. Um, Hayden, Olivia is the, the sweetest girl ever. Mm -hmm. She is a hip hop dancer. Does cool. competitive hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Plays volleyball. And she does Spartan races as well, does Spartan cool. kids. Yeah. So I love it because she'll be out there and, you know, Miss Pris doing hip hop. And then yeah. she'll turn around and be in the mud and doing Spartan races and yeah. loves it. The three boys are just a party looking for a place to happen <laughs> all the time. We call it controlled chaos. Yeah, yeah. Um, running around in their underwear with no clothes on in the house, yeah. like just all over the place all the time. Yeah. But each of them have their own individual personalities. Yeah. And one of the things that if I would go into detail, I could describe them all intimately. And I think that's one thing that I would say that Daddy Saturday has done for me. It's given me time to observe my kids. Yeah. And so often we don't take the time as parents to do that. Yeah. And you learn about your kids by just sitting there and watching them. And yeah. Spartan has given me that. I've been able to sit back and watch my kids in a Spartan race, and I can see their personalities as they walk through that course or run through that course or trying to overcome those obstacles. 
and they all approach it differently. Yeah. And I learned just by observing. Something I learned years ago, and I, the way I phrased it was, my kids are people, not projects. That's good. And, uh, and I realized that, wow, if I actually listen to them and care about what's important to them and not just try and mold them into what I want them to be. That's right. And it sounds like that's really what an opportunity you're creating for them. Sure. We try to give them lots of diverse experiences, right? And with four kids, we also don't let it don't let them run the show because sure. like a lot of families today, they get so involved in so many things and they're going 20 different places and they lose that family time, yeah. that family dynamic. Like dinner times are very important to us, right? Yeah. We love to sit at the table together at dinner at night. Yeah. So we try to also maintain that even with four kids that are really involved, yeah. um, one sport a season, you know, one or two things at a time. And that way we maintain that balance. And, and balance is key, right? Because you have people whose kids aren't doing anything and those kids are getting in trouble. That's but right. I've also seen families where they have you know, they're leaving swimming to get to dance or leaving dance to get to tennis or leaving tennis to get to tutoring. And um, that takes a toll, not just on the kids, but on mom and dad too, where, oh, you know, yeah. suddenly mom and dad have no relationship because they've been just making sure the kids have too much. Sure. If we're playing tag, right? And yeah, you're, yeah. you're slapping fives as you're walking in and out the door together. Yeah. And that's not a way to, and then you look at everything else. Now, all of a sudden you have to break down the family because you're not having that combined family time at dinner. You're typically eating fast food or you're eating on the run. Yeah. So diets and health starts to go down. And yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's a problem with our society today that there is this constant need for, for movement, for um, being involved, this convenient men, convenience mentality that we have. Yeah. So there's a lot of challenges to being a parent today. I don't, I don't push that off by any means, but I think yeah. there's things that we can do, simple things that can restore that balance in the family. And so Daddy Saturday isn't just making it easy. It's not like I'm, I'm creating systems to make life easier. Uh, there's still challenges. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and look, let me put a big qualifier out there because sometimes people, they, they hear Daddy Saturday and they think it's just about Saturday. Sure. No, that's just the name. Yeah, that's yeah, because yeah. that's how it started with me. Daddy yeah. Saturday is, it, is, it's a mindset, right? Yeah. It's all about how you be intentional and engage with your kids all the time and take yeah. advantage of all the opportunities that you have to do that. Yeah. It'd be 15 minutes on a Wednesday in one-on-one yeah, sure. time, right? Yeah. Going for a walk, taking a bike ride. Um, but but what you, I'll, you I'll, created it with the foundation originally of, of the Saturdays and then it... it goes into your whole life that's right and, yeah. and look saturdays we typically have more free time sure right so we can take that time and say what do i want to do with it i've chosen to give it to my kids yeah. and to support my wife and yeah. i've seen the benefits and the blessings that have come from that but to your earlier point in question look i am not a perfect dad sure. i still screw up all the time yeah. right but daddy saturday has given me an awareness to say look i messed up now how do i go reconcile that with my kids or how do i go make that right or how do i move forward and become the dad that i want to be because i have these principles that i've put out there that I want to live by. And again, model that for them. And model it for them. Well, how great is that? That's right. Hey, we're going to take a break. Um, I would say let's go run around the mountain, but you've been doing that already. Look at, <laughs> look at you. He came straight from the mountain. So the mud to prove uh, it. we'll find something to do on a break and we're going to come right back. Sounds good. Spartan X Leadership is a one-day event where masters of industry collaborate, connect, and learn resiliency skills for optimal team performance. Throwing spears, climbing walls, and bringing the Spartan mindset to the fast-paced world of business. Learn more at SpartanXLeadership.com. That was the best break I've ever had. We didn't do anything. <laughs> it was fantastic. I needed a break. We you didn't did. do anything you at did. this point. Hey, uh, first of all, congratulations on, on getting up there and crushing that mountain. I, I, I want to talk just for a second about what you did today. Um, you did a beast which is 13 plus miles on a very hard mountain, uh, but in a winter storm. It was unbelievable. Um, Joe Cantori, who works for the Weather Channel, yeah. made this term called thunder snow. Yeah. And we had thunder snow on the top of the mountain today. Yeah. Wow. And lightning and sleet. And it was, it was an incredible experience. So it started off the day as you know, 40 degrees and some sunshine ended up being a winter wonderland up on top of the mountain. Wow. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Um, Daddy Saturday. Such a great name. But unpack it for me. I know there's a lot more to it than just Daddy and Saturday. Like, and you're saying about it being a movement, and I love that thought. So how did it go from I'm going to be a better dad on Saturdays to this is a life mission? Well, what I found was as I started to put the platform out there, um, I just had this overwhelming number of dads that started to engage and say, I'm struggling with the same things. Um, I quit drinking two years ago mm -hmm. to improve my health, to yeah. do all that I've done through Daddy Saturday. You know, Daddy Saturday isn't my day job. I have sure. a full-time career too, yeah. right? My wife's a, a busy businesswoman, so I had to find time and margin. So that's one of the things that I did. I had an overwhelming number of dads reach out and say, hey, I want to do the same thing. Can you help me? Um, a lot of dads reach out and say, how can I be engaged with my kids on the weekends? What, what activities do you have? What do you do? How do you do it? Um, so how do you maintain that balance between work and life? Yep. So I just started to have all these dads reaching out and I said, gosh, I've like, I've got something here and I want to create a platform that can help them and serve them no matter where they are, what their situation is. 
And what I found was that I did a TEDx over two years ago on fatherlessness. So that was kind of the platform that put it out there. The book was next. The book yeah. was just released in June. The book we say is a field manual for fatherhood. Right. And then from the book, um, we've just had some a lot of fun producing resources that can help dads no matter where they are. So we've got an Alexa skill. Yeah. So literally you can ask Alexa, what should I do with my kids for this weekend? She'll look at the weather in your area. She'll give you an inside or outside activity based on the weather. She will source the products and put them in your shopping list that you need to do whatever the activity is. So water balloons for water balloon yeah. flight or what have you. And then you can buy them straight from Amazon, have them shipped to your house, Amazon Prime. So for that millennial dad that wants yeah. to be engaged in technology, there you go. There's a solution. Well, it's also so great. So many people use that as an excuse. It's like, oh, I'm sucked into my phone or my computer all the time. And you know, all the kids want to do is watch TV. You said, hey technology can be great too it can but let's take that thing you're complaining about and make it part of the solution that's right exactly yeah. and then what we what we hope for and what we're starting to do is then i want to see people sharing that right and yeah. posting what they're doing and part of that's really important you just brought up a great point we have this digital dilemma in our society today right and the use of screen time and how yeah. much time we as parents are modeling that for our kids and how much time our kids are spending on digital devices so one of the things that Daddy Saturday does is helps them become curators and content creators, yeah. Yeah. right? Which is very different than being purely a consumer. A consumer, yeah, absolutely. So tell me about um, the, the content. So, so you're putting it on YouTube. You've got the book. You've got your podcast. Um, tell me about each of those channels and, and, and how it's impacting things. Yeah, so the book has been great. Um, I had several fathers reach out. I'll tell you two stories. Sure. So I had a dad reach out. Um, he is a busy businessman, has four daughters. Um, he had his mother-in-law grandmother-in-law and his wife at home. So the guy was totally outnumbered <laughs> in a very difficult yeah, situation. Yeah. He said, you know what? You've inspired me. Um, I want to do this. He reached yeah. out to me through LinkedIn and he said, can you help me? So I sent him a copy of the book. He read the book. He did his first daddy daughter date night. Yeah. The girls were blown away. They'd never done anything like that. He did it on a Tuesday. The following week on Monday night, they said, Hey dad, what are we doing for daddy daughter date night? Yeah. His wife came and said, what happened to you? And he said, I read this book. And she said, I want to read that book too. That's so awesome. again, it's not just for dads. Yeah. Moms can take a lot out of this too, yeah. um, especially single moms, right? Because they have yeah. a, a really tough job being mm -hmm. there by themselves. So this platform really intentionality is for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make that very clear that anyone can gain you know, great information about being a better parent from the platform. That's awesome. And as you also mentioned earlier when we were off camera about, you know, that, uh, that you've learned, not learned, but it's, it's experienced that, you know, Saturday was where it started. But now, you know, you're using your Tuesdays better and your Thursdays better. And, and you know, you, you bring up a good point in that it's it's so often when you see a movement, right, you get caught up in the name or the branding of it. Yeah. And you know, Daddy Saturday is the hook. It's yeah. the catch. But then when people start to really understand what it is, they see that it's more of a community. Right. I call yeah. it a movement. But what yeah. we're really hoping to build is a community. And that's part of the big long term goal. You asked me about where this is going. And that's a big piece of this. So we have a community we're creating within our website. And the community is going to be a broad community, but it's just for fathers. Mm -hmm. And we'll have really niche categories. So if I'm a father who is, God forbid, they've lost a child and yeah. then that mourning or grief period, like how do I deal with that? Well, now sure. they can create a support group within that. Other dads who are going through the exact same yeah. thing. Or I'm a dad who's been going through a divorce. Or I'm a dad who has a, um, a child that has a disability, yeah. right? So now they've, they can talk to other dads. And it's not on Facebook where they're getting pushed ads and it's, yeah. it's in this public sphere. They can be in this community of fathers and really have that ability to grow through that channel. So that's where this is going. Yeah. And then we have a nonprofit we've established, a 501c3, called the Daddy Saturday Foundation. And that's designed to serve four specific populations. It's a big part of our 10 million fathers in the next 10 years yeah. ending fatherlessness. So we serve the National Guard. Mm -hmm. We serve the incarcerated. Mm -hmm. We serve um, first responders, so firefighters, police, and EMTs. And then we also serve opportunity zones, which are low income areas that the government has designated for investment. Yep. And there's a lot of infrastructure going in place, but not a lot of social programs like helping the fathers that are there, which these areas have high incidence of fatherlessness. This is huge. So we're serving those areas. And the way that we're doing that is through two channels. One, we have a dad box, mm -hmm. which is really cool. It's, a, it's like a subscription box program. Yep. So we gift those to the fathers in those areas. Uh, South Carolina National Guard, as an example, wants them for all of the National Guards. So we're about to launch a crowdfunding campaign to raise the funds for this program. And, and what you'll love is we not only have the activities that they can do with their kids, um, but we also have Spartan Edge, which oh, cool. is the Spartan curriculum yeah. that we're putting in there so that they can have character building and activities for mental, physical development as well. 
And then we have nutritional planning too. So this for that healthy meals you can make with your kids to combat yeah. childhood obesity. Yeah. And then we've got community coaches. So the box is the physical piece. Yeah. The community coaches are going to be there to be that, that leader in that local market. So if I'm in the national guard, I stand up and say, Hey, I want to be the community coach. Yeah. So I want to help my dads in my area by organizing events, by being there to serve them. If somebody's going through a challenge or a trial in the local person, eyes, hands and feet in the market to help serve them. So have you identified champions and leaders within the people who've come along so far? Cause I mean, these are some huge um, missions that you've uh, set out there now, right? Like, sure. And, and, and not huge is un- unattainable. They're totally attainable, but wow. I mean, you've, this is big. Oh, thanks. I, yeah, you know, so. it's, if you're going to go big or go home, right. And, sure. and this is a big problem. It is a huge epidemic. And so, I want to make a dent in it. And, and who, who, who are you pulling in? Who are you rallying to, to help drive this forward? So I have a board of advisors, a board of directors on the side of the nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And I've got a whole bunch of other people on the other side of Daddy Saturday as well that are pouring into me. So we have a lot of collaborations. Um, in fact, through the Spartan Media Fest, I met a couple of people that are going to now be involved and engage in the program. Great, so I have a huge thanks yeah. to everyone that Marion and others that pulled out together because we were able to meet people that are now going to contribute to Daddy Saturday and some potential collaborations that will help drive that forward. Because um, people ask me all the time, I said, what do you need? And I said, I need money and manpower, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, if you have a mission, but you yeah. don't have the monetary component, the mission falls flat. Yeah. So we're fundraising, we're driving growth, and we're creating sustainable and substantial financial mechanisms because I don't want this to be a traditional nonprofit where we're out there tin cupping for money yeah. all the time. Yeah. I want this to create so much value that people say, I can't wait to give to this to help it grow because we yeah. know who we're serving. Wow. Wow. <laughs> no, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, in, in um, so many of these interviews, you have these people with these great, great ideas, and, and they're, they're doing something with it, but you don't hear everyone has this much clarity. Um, so you have the vision, which is fantastic, but you have so much um, that you've put around it you know, structure to it. Well, thank you. So I I can't see it being anything but successful. This is unbelievable. Well, if you ask my wife, she says I probably have too much clarity sometimes and I'm too (laughs) ambitious. And as a result, though, I've learned something through that process. And so we call them envelope ideas because I've got ideas a minute, right? That I can, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I'm a connector. I'm just going to throw something in. I I want you to say exactly there. Yeah. The great thing with this is that the people who are watching and listening, you know, uh, when we have a business person on, they're not always a business person. We have an athlete on, they're not always an athlete. So I always look and see what can they take out of it. So the incredible thing about this is what you're describing to me right now about what's making this successful, it doesn't matter what they're doing in their life. They can take this exact same skill. So I just want, I want you to <laughs> listen through the lens of, he's about to say something fantastic here. How am I going to apply that in my life? Because I just, what you're saying is just blowing me away. I'm going to go back and watch this interview that I've conducted many times. <laughs> no, really. You're because, too kind. No, no, but I mean it to, to absorb and, and really get this. So um, go back to what you're saying. <laughs> when so, I should really cut you off. So, no, you're, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. So like so many entrepreneurs, I have so many ideas, right? Mm-hmm. And I found that I try to execute all these ideas at once and I get nowhere because I'm spinning my wheels. Mm-hmm. So I have envelope ideas now. Mm-hmm. I put them in an envelope. I put it in a desk drawer yeah. and I pull it back out when the time is right. Yeah. Right. And, um, or you can call them wine ideas, right? Cause wine needs to ferment okay, and mature sure. over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I need those ideas sometimes just to ferment or percolate yeah. for a little bit before I can pull them back out and they're ready to go. That's helped me tremendously. And that's, yeah. what's given me part of this clarity. As I said, you know, what is the most important thing that I can do right now to reach that 10 million fathers in 10 years. Yeah. And so that's how I've structured this. And right now it's by engaging those four populations specifically and building out the community that we described. Um, we, we joke sometimes about the good idea pile. And that's you know, the right. good idea pile gets too high, that's but right. that literally physically putting it in an envelope and saying, hey, I'm not throwing this just in a pile. I'm coming back to this. Because if it's just this idea that you throw intangibly onto that pile, you never get back to it. That's right. I'm, I'm going home and starting my good idea pile. So every, yeah. every every good idea, if it's not worth writing down, forget about it. And if you, it's write worth the, writing you literally write the name of the yeah. idea in the back of the envelope. Yeah. And you put it in the drawer. Oh, that's fantastic. Holy smokes. Um, where's So so just give me um the next year. Like So so tell me wh- where this is going in the next year. And the other thing is how people can get involved. Because to me, that's a really, really big sure. thing. Um, you're making it, I think people watching this, Everyone's gonna be like, I got to be part of this. So, 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 what what's a way that somebody can can get involved, either as a consumer or helping you produce? Sure. So, I think there's a couple of things they can do. One is DaddySaturday.com is the hub for all things Daddy Saturday. And mm-hmm. what we tried to do is create a bunch of resources that they can access as a as a parent, as a father, that are just, they're completely free. They're yeah. value to them. Um, and that's the first and foremost, most important goal. So I want them to go there and, and take advantage of those resources, no matter where they are as a parent, as a father. Second thing is the nonprofit is, you know, it's my, it's my dream. It's my calling. It's my mission to impact those 10 million fathers. So we need people yeah. to come in and support that. Yeah. There's a couple of ways they can do that. Financially is one, right? You can give sure. tax deductibly. Yeah. A lot of ways to do that. 
Um, there's ways on the website you can take advantage of that. The other way is that you want to step up and be a community coach or community leader sure. and start Daddy Saturdays in your own community yeah. and then bring people together and then post and share and take part in the community piece of this. And those would be my two biggest asks. Help us drive the nonprofit forward to reach as many fathers as possible and then start it in your own community and be that champion for being an intentional and engaged parent in your own local area. That's awesome. I want to share one thing that's come up in my mind about this. So if I'm a, a dad with a one-year-old and a three-year-old and I think, oh my God, I'm so glad this is perfect timing. I can do it right. What if you're a dad of a 29 and a 31-year-old and or, or yeah. a 17 and 19-year-old, sure. whatever, and, and you're like, and you're looking at this thinking, oh, where was this when I needed it 15, 20 years ago, right? What, what if you feel like it's too late? So I get the question a lot and people look at the cover of my book and they see my four kids and they mm -hmm. see how young they are and they're kind of like, well, that's great for young kids. You're clearly in the middle of that, but what about someone like you said, who's got yeah. a teenager or a young adult and now they're a parent to an adult child. Mm -hmm. What I would say is it's never too late. And the number one question I get from a father in that status is they say, I wish I would have had this 10, 20, 30 years ago. And I say, you know what, what's preventing you from being intentional and engaging them today? Yeah. They still want you to be their dad. They always will. And so the important thing there is to move towards your child, yeah. move towards your adult child even, and engage them, be intentional, communicate with them, create the relationship that you want. And they may not move right towards you back right away. Maybe they will. They'll be so surprised that that's what they've always wanted. So they'll move back and move towards you immediately. Maybe they won't, but that's okay. My commitment and my promise is if you do that enough, they will eventually move back towards you and you'll create the relationship you want with your kids. That's awesome. Um, You've given me so much great stuff here. You've given the listeners so much great stuff, the, the, the watchers on YouTube. Um, if, if you could say here are three things, if, if, you know, if you fast forwarded through this at the end and you're just going to get the three big things from it, what, what are three things that people can take away and, and apply in their lives? Sure. So I think what we talked about today, there's three big things. The first is be intentional and engage with your kids. And being intentional means that you create the space for the relationship and the communication and the opportunity to interact with your kids to help raise good kids that become great adults. And I'll put a caveat in that because sometimes people say, well, gosh, Justin, you expect me to do this every Saturday and all day on Saturday and during the week. And look, being epic and having those intentional moments doesn't always have to be expensive, extravagant, or extraordinary. Yeah. It can be very simple things. So look in your own backyard, look in your house and what you have, just create the space to do that. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two would be, we talked about far more is caught than taught. Yeah. So model what you wanna see in your kids, right? diet, exercise, the way that you work, the way that you treat your spouse, right? Yeah. Especially if you have girls yeah. um, and you're a father. So all of those things are really important to model. So far more is caught than taught. And then the final thing I would say is that we didn't get to talk about this in detail, but I would say, uh, don't be the hero to your kids. Uh, be the guide. It's a concept that's really hard for men, really hard for dads. But listen, we have our kids in this really unique circumstance. We see the millennials today, and many of them have never experienced failure in their youth. And now they're experiencing failure in adulthood, and they have no idea, no mechanism how to deal with failure. Because dad's always swept in and saved the day. Because mom and dad have always swept in and saved the day. It's the snowplow parent, the helicopter mm -hmm. parent, the bulldozer parent. You've heard all mm -hmm. the names. So failure at eight is far different than failure at 28. Yeah. We want to encourage failure at eight. Yeah. That's what Spartan Kids does, right? Sure, yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah. So I've cultivated that with my own kids, knowing that when they get to adulthood, they'll have a mechanism to deal with that. I've done that by making them the hero of their own story, yep. experiencing success or, success or failure on their own, and then I'm there to guide them through it so they don't get too high in success. They learn from their failure. And can I tell you one really cool thing? Please do. So one, one more really cool one thing. One more really cool thing. I know you said three. <laughs> no, was, no, no. I mean like one more because you've already told me about 100. This is great. No, keep going. So the other piece of that is when you position yourself as the guide, yeah. and I never expected this to happen, is you let your ego down. And what that does is it allows other guides to come into sure. your kids' lives because yeah. I'm like the least handy guy in the world, yeah. right? I can barely hang a picture if you ask my wife, and yeah. I've learned a couple of things over time. So if I try to do that or teach my kids about cars, like I can teach them how to throw spirals and curveballs and do Spartan races. Yeah. But that's not my forte. So I've brought men into their lives that have yeah. expertise in those areas Absolutely. that have given my kids experiences and helped them learn something that may be what they're passionate about that I never could have done on my own. Yeah, And it's all from being the guide. And then you go back full circle now to that question about parenting an adult child. Yeah. They don't need your hero, you to be a hero at that point. They yeah. need to be a guide, Yeah, right? Because they're making major life decisions and they need a guide to help them through that. They don't need a hero because they're an adult. You may not think you were a hero anyway. <laughs> you really are. Thanks, man. I appreciate this a lot. Thank you. I love caught versus taught. 
right? Because kids, you don't even know what they're picking up. I know I was with our producer's son the other day, and we were talking about two, three years ago at a wrestling tournament, and there was one little sentence that I would never have guessed made an impact on him. There were some kids that were doing sprints, and he just picked up one little sentence the coach said, we're going to make an endurance run out of you yet. And that changed the whole trajectory of his sports career. And then he started running. He's now on a, on a track team. So and you just don't know that thing that a kid's going to hear or see, right? Totally true. I totally true. And especially when you're younger and you're such a sponge and you pick up all these things. And that's why, like, as a mentor and as an adult, you know, it's good to have some mindfulness around the things that you're saying because kids are listening and kids are watching. And I think that's why it's so important when we're, like, showing the mentorship. I mean, this guy was awesome, right? He came in right after his race. He's trying to get 10 million. He's trying to get 10 million parents involved. It's like, that was your goal. Now it's 100 million. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's just great to see that, you know, memories are made by actions that you take and that you do and things that you do and that have shared memory. And that's what I think Spartan is so amazing at doing, right? You were talking about teenagers and... Well, Spartan's amazing, uh, but any, any hard thing, it could be a marathon, anything, anything challenging where the parent and the kid, the child can do it together, I think... Um, I think is powerful because there's not a lot of opportunities for parents, right? We have four kids at home. It's not, a, I'm not going to get on the wrestling mat with them in a tournament, right? I can't. Yeah. So I end up sitting on the sidelines. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to get in the soccer game with them. We end up sitting on the sidelines, but to go out and do a race and yeah. train together and do those yeah. things together yeah. or even skiing, you could ski together with you. Those are powerful uh, moments that you don't get an opportunity for the rest of your life to do. So, no, and, and you always talk about, right? We're not trying to be, the hero or you're, you're like, you're trying to be the guide. Right. And then, so when you're saying like so many of these parents, right, we talk about helicopter parents, you talk, you know, wrapping them in bubble wrap or whatever it is. No, we're trying to put the obstacles in front of them. Right. I wish Johnny was here. Our, our other co-host. He, He's um, better than me. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he, he loves wrestling or, 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 or Colonel Nye would appreciate this too, but there's been a, a, a video running around the internet. It's, it's gone viral where a parent, jumps on the wrestling mat uh, because because the opponent of his son, his son's opponent is beating him up, is beating up his son. So he runs out on the wrestling mat and rips the kid off his son and yells at the ref. And and it's like, Lady, no, you're setting no. that kid up for some right. Because because times. life is going to be hard. And yeah. so we got to put the obstacles in front of them, mm -hmm. not take them away. Yeah, I mean. I think that's brilliant, you know, and it's just, if you look at society throughout all time, you know, time with your kids is sacred, right? Ben Greenfield interview, he talks about dads, for example, used to march out on war for three months at a time, right? They come home, that time with their family is sacred. You're marching off, I'm from Connecticut, you know, I see every dad marching off to Wall Street every morning, coming back late at night. Then when you come back, what's your choice? Like, what's your legacy and how are you building your kingdom. Are you hanging out with your kids? Are you role modeling to them? I or, just got I mean, back like from Greece. I was just I was just in Greece with the mayor of Sparta. I was with the historians of Sparta, and they said something really powerful that ties into this. They said, you know, a lot of people um, that look back at history on Sparta think, oh, they were just warriors and they just were bloodthirsty. And he said, no, actually, the reality was when we dig in to what was going on, uh, it was we have to train these kids from seven years old to 20 years old, 13 years of hardcore training, mm -hmm. right? The reason we have to do that is because if they want freedom, the only way to get freedom from disease, from tyranny, from bullying, and not just then, not just uh, 3,000 years ago. Patterns never changed. Right? The yeah. only way to get freedom is, is to be resilient, is to be tough. Yep. Because if you're not, well, then you're like a lemming. And, and you're just like you're, you're walking just off the cliff walking off the cliff yeah right with that with that parent trying to <laughs> jump off yeah, and scoop wrap you, up. you in bubble wrap quick with yeah. duct tape before you go yeah it's not gonna work so you know um, i, I want to hear from people yeah we want to hear from you what what do you guys like to do together as a family you know have you come out to a race or are there other challenging things you do together let's create this beautiful spartan family and beyond of beautiful time spent doing things that make us more resilient as a family, as a community, as a world. Yeah, like, you know. uh, listen, and they could be silly things, like maybe start out slow. Like, all right, we're going to watch TV together as a family, but make sure the kids are holding the TV up off the ground yeah, the entire exactly. time. Exactly, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to hear from you. Yeah. Talk to you soon. See you. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by SpartanX Leadership. Find out more at SpartanXLeadership.com. 